Coming up on today's show, LG Chem's battery subsidiary wins an important legal case against rival SK Innovation, one that could have effects on the electric vehicle market. Audi unveils its e-tron GT Halo car, and a bit of nostalgia and some clever marketing makes interest in the Cadillac Lyric soar. These stories and more coming next. It's the weekend, and that means it's time for another TEN, Transport Evolved News. If you're enduring the winter storms currently bashing the US, I totally feel you. Please stay safe. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Join them and help the switch from fossil fuels to electric today by heading to electricauto.org. An ongoing legal battle between LG Energy Solutions and SKI reached a conclusion this week, with the US International Trade Commission ruling in LG's favour after it accused SKI of stealing trade secrets and intellectual property. Both firms have been fighting for a decade or more over electric vehicle battery IP, but this ruling has resulted in SKI being banned from importing, manufacturing or selling lithium-ion batteries in the US. However, there are three exceptions that are very important for the EV world. First, Volkswagen and Ford get exceptions to use SKI batteries for their upcoming EVs for two and four years respectively, and Kia will be allowed to use SKI imported cells to provide support and service to customers' cars that left the factory with SKI cells in them. Elon Musk was back on the Joe Rogan experience this week, and that means plenty of headlines were made for the EV world. Sadly, due to licensing restrictions, I can't publish the video here, but Elon Musk discussed a number of interesting facts, including him promising that he wants to make the next generation Tesla Roadster hover like a rocket, as long as he can make it happen without killing people. And Musk also noted that the new yoke-like steering wheel in the Model S and Model X won't need to be used that much because, quote, autopilot is getting good enough that you won't need to drive most of the time. Musk also let slip that the Tesla Semi has a battery pack capacity of around 500 kilowatt hours, which is far smaller than people had previously thought it would be. He also stated he's pitched the idea of a carbon tax to the Biden administration, and the suggestion was apparently well received. Audi revealed its new Halo car this week in the form of the 2021 Audi e-tron GT and its range-topping sibling, the Audi RS e-tron GT. Looking slightly lower and longer than the A7 or S7, the e-tron GT is based on the same J1 platform that underpins the Porsche Taycan. This means it gets the same impressive performance and 85 kilowatt hours of usable battery capacity. Built for driving performance and cruising on the Autobahn all day, the e-tron GT isn't going to win any range competitions. Audi estimates an expected EPA range of around 238 miles, 383 kilometers. Price-wise, you're not going to get much change from 100,000 US dollars for the e-tron GT, while the RS e-tron GT will cost closer to 140,000. 100 million dollars. That's how much the official prize is on offer for the X Prize carbon removal, as personally sponsored by Elon Musk. Musk had hinted he'd be funding a competition to devise the best way of removing carbon dioxide from the Earth's atmosphere last week, but now we have a few more details to go with. As the official XPRIZE website details, the competition will officially open with team registration available on Earth Day this year, that's April 22nd, and will conclude on Earth Day 2025. The competition will require teams to demonstrate solutions that can pull carbon dioxide directly from the atmosphere or from the oceans. These solutions must not only scale to gigaton levels, but also be capable of storing that CO2 safely in a permanent and environmentally friendly way. It's definitely going to be a competition to watch. Toyota, despite its excellent first-generation RAV4 EV, has long been an opponent of electric vehicles, expressing at both a corporate and executive level its preference for hybrid vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. This week, it announced it would be bringing two all-new electric vehicles to the US 
alongside a plug-in hybrid model. So far, so good. But in the press release announcing this news, Toyota couldn't resist publishing details of an in-house study, which it released the source codes for, stating, quote, GHG of currently available BEV model and PEV model are roughly the same in on-road performance when factoring in pollutants created by electricity production for the average US energy grid used to charge batteries. In other words, while Toyota is now bringing a new EV or two to market, it's still very much doing everything it can to create confusion over which vehicle is ultimately better for the environment, even when the majority of scientific studies disagree. With more and more Teslas on the road, there is increasing pressure on Tesla's supercharger network. This is particularly problematic in the rush hour in areas of high density of Teslas passing through, with queues forming for the most popular of supercharger sites. To get around this problem, Tesla has just expanded an existing program designed to reward customers who delay charging until off-peak hours. Announced for February 20th, 27th and March 6th, Tesla will offer 50% discounts for customers who shift their Tesla supercharger use across Norway and Sweden. Customers get discounted electricity, and Tesla gets to benefit from paying less for peak rate electricity. It's a win-win all around. Talking of electricity use, it is official. The average home in Norway now uses much more electricity than it used to, and it's all down to the massive popularity of electric cars, as well as increased use of electric radiators in the winter. According to data published this week, 5 million Norwegian customers used as much electricity as twice as many Swedish customers, thanks to Norway's drive to shift its energy use away from fossil fuels. It makes Norway's per capita electricity consumption the second highest in the world, second only to Iceland. But in the same week, Norway detailed how it became the largest net exporter of electricity in Europe, overtaking France's nuclear-heavy power network. How did this happen? Simple. Norway found it had to boost output from its extensive hydroelectric dam network to prevent them from overfilling during a particularly wet second half to last year. When we make a video on new electric vehicles, we try to reiterate the fact that your mileage will, and usually does, vary from official figures. But this week, a new report from Edmunds showcased that very nicely, detailing that some cars do better on range than others. Testing a variety of EVs currently on sale in the US, it plotted real-world versus EPA range ratings and found that the Audi e-tron Sportback, Chevrolet Bolt EV, Ford Mustang Mark e Kia e Nero, Mini Cooper SE, Hyundai Ioniq EV, Hyundai Kona EV, Porsche Taycan and Nissan Leaf SL all easily exceeded their official range ratings, but that the Polestar 2 and every Tesla model failed to meet EP estimates. It's worth going and reading the report to see how your EV performed. The Growing Renewable Energy and Efficiency Now Act of 2021 has been reintroduced to the US legislature. I say reintroduced because it had originally been introduced during the last session and it got nowhere. But with a change in power in the White House and both houses, the bill's sponsors are now pretty hopeful. If passed in its current form, it would include a slew of measures designed to make things easier for the clean energy and green vehicle world. In addition to raising the US federal tax credit for photovoltaic solar panel installations to 30%, it would extend the limits for electric vehicle purchase credits, meaning that Tesla and Chevrolet electric vehicles could once again be eligible for purchase incentives. It would also introduce a credit for used EV purchases, add energy storage technologies to the list of eligible clean tech for various incentives and write-offs, and support the establishment of a new clean energy sector workforce. Meanwhile, half a world away, quite literally, New Zealand announced its support for 22 new low emission transportation projects across the country. These include providing secure electric bike storage and charging for a community bike share project, assisting with the purchase of two second-hand Nissan Leafs for a community car share scheme, further expanding New Zealand's public charging network in collaboration with the partner ChargeNet, and much more. Looking at larger projects, the funding will set up two new extended test drive programs for commercial customers in New Zealand for both battery electric and hydrogen electric vehicles. 
With New Zealand already one of the few countries in the world to tackle COVID head on, its tackling of clean energy and transportation projects is just going to make folks who aren't Kiwi even more green with envy. And now it's time for short shorts. Israeli firm Shakratak has completed the first installation of a kinetic EV charging station in Germany. What's that, I hear you ask? Well, instead of using batteries to store power on site, it uses a specially designed high-speed flywheel to store mechanical energy. The Azeta-inspired Microlino electric microcar is officially set for production this year. Cars will begin rolling off the production line in September, and to celebrate the announcement, the company shared new video of its latest prototype in action. Elon Musk and Tesla forced the value of Bitcoin up fairly significantly this week after Tesla purchased $1.5 billion worth of the cryptocurrency as an investment. Tesla says it will be accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment in the not too distant future. Polestar has opened the order books one last time for the final year production run of the Polestar 1 plug-in hybrid sports car. The Polestar 1 was never meant to be in production for more than a few years, and it's already something of a collector's car. Rivian is gearing itself up for entry onto the stock market this year with a possible IPO set for the second half. Unlike other plug-in startups of late, however, Rivian will be doing it the old-fashioned way, just like Tesla did. Frankly, there's no need for a SPAC since Rivian isn't particularly cash-strapped. We've all heard of land speed records, but have you ever heard of an indoor speed record for a car? Well, apparently it's a thing, and this week Porsche set a new one after a Porsche Taycan Turbo S hit 165.5 kilometers per hour in a, sh in a mall in New Orleans. Oregon-based Archimoto hit a momentous milestone this week, hitting a market cap of one billion US dollars on the stock market. It's been enjoying a particularly strong growth in share price and in recent weeks, and early investors are certainly celebrating. General Motors has provided a short update on the status of its investigation into the Chevrolet Bolt EV fires, which prompted a temporary software fix last year. GM says it's still working on a permanent solution, but has reiterated its commitment to providing battery replacements or full fix to return the full range to customers' cars. Jeep has jumped on the electric vehicle bandwagon, teasing an image of an upcoming all-electric Wrangler EV and hinting at solar-powered charging stations at popular off-road trials at a website it set up as an offshoot to a recent Super Bowl ad. Talking of solar-powered electric vehicle charging, Electrify America has now officially turned on the first of 30 solar-powered charging stations in rural, remote parts of California. The off-grid charging stations aren't super fast, but they are completely free to use. Rivian, just about ready to start series production of its R1T and R1S in Normal, Illinois this spring, is apparently looking for a new production facility in Europe, where it plans on making European market-friendly sibling pickups and SUVs to the US ones. Welsh hydrogen fuel cell startup River Simple has signed a memorandum of understanding with Siemens to work together to bring its hydrogen fuel cell car and its delivery vehicles to market. Remember, though, that MOUs are technically not usually legally binding. LG Chem rushed to correct media reports this week that suggested that the battery fires involving Chevrolet Bolt and Hyundai Kona EVs were caused by a problem with a cell separator inside packs of affected vehicles. LG Chem stated that an official cause has still not been found. Kia held its own Investor Day this week, laying out its plans for transitioning its brand away from fossil fuels. Its plan, Plan S, involves producing 11 all-electric models by the end of 2026. Seven of them will be based on the new eGMP platform. Tom Zhu, head of Tesla China, has confirmed this week that Tesla hopes to complete construction of its new research and development center in China in the coming months, saying that it will be working full steam ahead on developing the long-awaited $25,000 car that some Tesla fans are calling the Tesla Model 2 this year. 
Opal and sister company Vauxhall have unveiled a passenger-carrying version of the recently revealed Combo E van. Called the Combo E Life, this van adds an additional option for families, not to mention those who need to transport wheelchair users, as the Combo has previously successfully been converted to a wheelchair-friendly van. JD Power has named the Kia Nero EV the winner of its new electric vehicle experience ownership study. The study polled nearly 1,000 EV owners on their ownership experiences across a variety of different EVs, and the e Nero came out top. When looking for a camping trailer to tow behind an EV, small and lightweight are often at the top of the list, and now there's a new model to add to that list, the P17A camper from a company called Polydrops. It's got photovoltaic solar panels and up to 12 kilowatt hours of onboard energy storage, and it looks a little like a Cybertruck. Sadly, it doesn't assist with powered driving. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. We're all familiar by now, I'm guessing, with the way in which some car dealerships will eagerly steer you away from buying an electric car and instead do absolutely everything they can do to get you in to a gasoline or diesel powered car. In the age of COVID, as more sales go online, I'm guessing that pressure has subsided significantly as people are less likely to casually pick up a different car in that setup. But this week we heard about Mercedes-Benz official website doing exactly what dealers are known for doing, trying to advertise Mercedes-Benz GLE models as a comparison to customers who are already using the online configuration tool to spec themselves out a Mercedes-Benz EQA EV. The thing being highlighted, how much cheaper the gas guzzlers were compared to the EV. Now, if that doesn't sound like desperation, I don't know what is. And finally, last week was the Super Bowl, as I'm sure many of you know. And as we discussed on last week's show, the Super Bowl this year had a pretty high number of EV ads played during it. One of them featuring Edgar Scissorhands, that's right, the son of Edward Scissorhands, has driven a significant spike in interest in the Cadillac Lyric EV. Cars.com said this week after the advert was aired, it experienced a noticeable rise in searches for the Cadillac Lyric, even though the car hasn't launched yet. While the ad didn't focus on the car all that much, it doesn't feature until the end of the video, in fact, the car's party trick, Super Cruise, is I'm sure what attracted most people's attention. That said, the car's charge cable is very clear in the video and it's pretty clear that the Lyric is an EV, so score one for EVs. That said, how would Edgar unplug the car without snipping the cable? Inquiring minds need to know. And on that note, we are done for today. But before I go, I'd like to thank the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making that switch to clean green cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator yourself, find local monthly groups to attend, virtually at the moment of course, or find an EV owner that you can ask questions with about making your own switch from gasoline to electric by heading to electricauto.org. We would all love it if you'd comment and subscribe to the channel, as well as consider supporting the team using one of the links below. There's also a link to our Discord chat room, so please do sign up and come and join in the fun. And don't forget to check out our Redbubble TE merch store while you're there. And in case you didn't hear, we are currently looking for a new team member to join us to help handle our social media interactions. And we have just extended the closing date. So if you're interested, be sure to check it out in the show notes below. I'll be back next week, but until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, stay safe, and as always, keep evolving.